welcome back to my channel. We are now in the season of constant FPL deadlines, so in this video I'm going to be talking about how I did in game week 14, which did not go as planned and I'm a little bit annoyed about it, and then my plans on how to try and claw it back in game week 15. Before we get started looking at how I got on in game week 14, I just wanted to say if you haven't subscribed yet please do, we are on the road to 5,000 subscribers and I would love to get there by Christmas. And now, I'm, so I'm dwelling on this game week. I did get a green arrow, which I'm grateful for. I got 62 uh, points in this game week. My overall rank is 491,951 and I've got 848 points in total. However, I had this conversation on Wednesday night where I was considering doing cash to Tomiyasu. Tomiyasu is a really versatile player. He can play on the left, he can play on the right. I thought that might save him from being benched and subbed on late. But I really talked myself out of it. I thought he's not nailed. It's probably not a good idea. Then Tomiyasu starts, gets an assist and gets taken off before Arsenal can see the goal. So he gets the clean sheet point. I think he got 11 points in total. And I'm really kicking myself for not just having kind of more of an eject reaction, taking out cash, doing the replacement and bringing him in and having a piece of that cheaper Arsenal defence. So I'm, I'm, I'm annoyed this game week. <laughs> I can't hide it. But this, going into game week 15, I've got one free transfer and two million in the bank because I did use two transfers last week, which will pay off in the long term, I'm hoping. <laughs> so let's get straight into the team. Obviously, in goal, Ariola, no clean sheet. We're not surprised there. In the defence, Trippier, a 12-pointer, which is the most welcome thing. I've transferred him in for a minus four and he's blanked two game weeks in a row. Now he got his return, he got an assist, he kept a clean sheet and he got three bonus points. So we came away with 12 points. It was also Trippier assist and golden goal. So I was jumping with joy when that happened. It's the best feeling when two of your players contribute to a goal and you get the points. Oh, it's so, so good. It's why we play FPL and <laughs> there were a few choice in this game week which brings us nicely to cash obviously benched only got one point really really frustrating one to own at the moment and then Pinnock sadly only two points in Bomo I transferred him in goodbye McGinn McGinn has left us we will not forget him the charity work that he's done I think 50 pounds was donated to charity thanks to his attacking returns but it was finally time to see him go and Bomo has come in and he got an assist we got five points it is less than I expected, especially when you consider Brentford 1-3-1. I was probably expecting a goal and an assist, just a bit more from Mbomo, but I'm really happy that he did get an attacking return. He did go off about 60, 76 minutes, and I was expecting him to play the full 90, so whether or not that would have changed things, and he actually, if he'd have been on for a bit longer, he would have had more, but I'm glad we are off. We haven't had a dud. <laughs> That's the, the positive side of bringing him Mbomo. And then Gordon, 10-pointer. I absolutely love Gordon. He's scored in every single home fixture so far this season. He's carrying on the trend. Unfortunately, the next two games are away. I think he's got Everton and then Tottenham. But then we're back to the home fixtures. If he can start stepping up more when he's away from home, he will just be in absolutely everyone's team. He got a goal, he got the clean sheet point, and he got two bonus points. So he is an absolute bargain. I think there was a price rise recently too, so I'm glad I beat that. And then Salah, only one assist against Fulham. <laughs> I do remember them. Just an assist. He got a five point. He didn't get any bonus. Again, similar to Mbomo, I expected a bit more from him considering Liverpool won 4 3. This is one of the ones where if I'd have seen that result, I would have expected a Salah and Darwin Hall. But unfortunately not. But even so, again, we will take it. I was going to captain Salah, but I had decided to go for Haaland instead. I'm glad I made that uh, decision. There's only four points in it, so it was very, very tight, as it tends to be between Salah and Haaland. And then Saka, if you watched my previous video, you'll know that I actually discussed transferring him out. I'm very pleased that I didn't. Thank you to anyone that's talked to me about doing so. He scored a goal and he got one bonus point, so we've got eight in total. I'm feeling much more confident about owning Saka now. And then Palmer, oh, this was frustrating. I thought the rumours that he was benched were just pure rumours, there was nothing behind it and he was going to start. He didn't start. And then he did come on, he got me one point, but he came on after Chelsea had been awarded the penalty. It's just, FPL is so much about luck. It's the most frustrating game. So unfortunately, nothing big from Cole Palmer. And then my front two, Darwin, Darwin, Darwin. He is testing us, isn't he? Obviously, I transferred out Ollie Watkins. Not for Darwin. Everyone did Watkins to Darwin. I did not save it for the bench. <laughs> my Watkins, Darwin. Yeah, I, um, we'll discuss it shortly. 
Darwin, sadly, only a two-pointer. It's really annoying. He gets so close and he just can't seem to be able to finish. And there could have been some opportunities for a nice Salah Darwin double up, similar to my Trippier Gordon one. But alas, this was not the game week, but we're going to be patient with Darwin. We know what he is capable of. That's why I keep reminding myself. And then Haaland, my captain, he got seven points. Obviously, I got 14 points from my captaincy. He got two assists. Unfortunately, he did get a yellow card, which took him out of the bonus points. One of those ones, but I will take it. I'm glad that he got two attacking returns. And then my bench. I don't want to show you guys this. Ugh. Obviously, turn at nothing. I did Watkins to Wood. <laughs> it, was to, it was to be able to fund and bombo. And I think... My team, I looked at my midfield and I was shocked at how template it was. And I thought, I can't go for Archer because everyone has that front three. So instead, I'm going to bring in Chris Wood. We all know I've got a soft spot for Forrest. And it would just be lovely if he scores. Look at look at the Hall of Fame of players that I just really like. We've got Ben Mee this week. Amazing. Last season. Top tier. Then we had McGinn. Wonderful man. He got so many returns for my team. A lot of the time he was benched, but they were still there. And now the next one, heard it here first, it's going to be Chris Wood. And then Gahey, two points. Kaboria is back. He is playing. He only got one point, but it's really good to know when a lot of my team at the moment doesn't seem to be starting. So at least we've got Kaboria to hopefully come in and save the day. Taking us nicely to transfer decisions. So we've obviously got a midweek uh, deadline this game week. It feels like it just doesn't even count. It feels like... I don't know, I'm just going to waste, not waste a transfer, but I wouldn't normally use a transfer on a goalkeeper. I think this week, or this deadline, is the time to do it. So first up, I'm considering, obviously, Dubravka, he's on everyone's lips at the moment. Matt Turner is not playing. Matt Turner is just taking up space in the team, space and money, but he's 4.1 million. I could downgrade to Dubravka for 3.9 million, ownership only 1.2%. And then I will be able to rotate my goalkeepers. Not that I'm necessarily that keen on keeping Areola, but I do quite like having the backup goalkeeper. And if there is a specifically tough fixture, hopefully Dubravka can swoop in and be good. Although to be honest, I'll probably be starting Dubravka over Areola <laughs> quite a lot at the moment because I've lost faith in Areola. But I really, really like the look of Dubravka. Obviously, we also don't know how long Pope's going to be out for. I saw something today that said it might be four months because of his shoulder injury. I also saw that maybe Newcastle are eyeing up De Gea, which is a little bit concerning. And this is one of the reasons I wouldn't want to do Ariola down to Dubravka because then if Dubravka for some reason doesn't end up playing or Pope comes back sooner or something, it's just going to be a bit of a minefield having to sort that out because I will have no goalkeepers. So at least with Ariola, we can rely on him starting and it would be nice to start the old goalkeeper rotation going again. I will be tripling up on Newcastle and obviously it will be double Newcastle defence, which I'm kind of umming and ahhing about. I do quite like being able to spread the defence a little bit more amongst players. And talking of that, the other option I have, because obviously my team is massively lacking Arsenal defence, is actually doing Ariola to Raya. This is a price increase. It's 0.6 million more. His ownership is a lot less than Ariola's. And it does give me that slice of Arsenal defence. But, oh, I don't know. There's something that I'm a little bit nervous about. And it is a lot of money to spend on a keeper, especially when we do have the wild cards coming up in, I think, game week 19, where I can probably deal with my whole defence issue that is going on at the moment. But I'm quite tempted by Raya. They've got Luton away coming up, then Villa away, then Brighton at home. They're not a bad run of fixtures. And then Arsenal do go into a really nice sea of green fixtures. I will check my phone right now to see when that happens. Because I think it's fairly soon. But it may be... Yeah, from game week 19, 19 to 22, the fixtures. I will read them out for you. Liverpool away, West Ham at home, Fulham away, Palace at home, Forest away. I quite like that. And the only difficult one, really, up until game week 22, is Liverpool away in game week 18. But I fancy Raya's chances for that. We could get some save points in. But again, I think it's probably the price that puts me off of this. But I tick the box of Arsenal defence. So that's the potential transfer for this game week. Or I just stick to what I was planning to do last week and do cash to Tomiyasu. I don't know. There's many options. So looking at my team for game week 15, I will have <laughs> my game week points. Green arrow territory. We're going to be a bit more humble this game week. But I'll go for, hypothetically, haven't done the transfers yet, but Dubravka in goal, playing against Everton away, Ariola on the bench for the Spurs game. Then in defence, we've got Trippier against Everton. 
We've got Gahey, Bournemouth at home, really nice fixture, hoping for an attack and return for Gahey, if not a clean sheet. And then Pinnock for Brighton um, away. Midfield, we're going full force with the midfield, so obviously Mbomo, Brighton away, Gordon, Everton away. It's an away fixture. Gordon is flagged, but I am just going to run on hope for this one, that I'm ignoring flags. And Gordon is absolutely fine, it's just precautionary, but he will go... And he will score an away goal and we're going to celebrate and it'll be a trippier assist and my team will be, have a nice big healthy green arrow. Then Salah, Sheffield United away. Obviously, I have to put the captaincy on him. I'm hoping that this is a Salah haul. Even, maybe even a penalty. Throw one in. Why not? And then we've got Saka Luton away. Feeling a lot more confident about Saka after seeing his performance this game week. So I'm hoping that long may continue. And then we've got Palmer, Manchester United away. Manchester United just aren't looking very strong defensively. I'm hoping Chelsea Man U is quite a thrilling game. Chelsea seem to get themselves into these really high scoring games at the moment, which is stressful to watch, but we, we're having okay outcomes. It's an improvement on the start of the season. So if we can have a win away at Manchester United, maybe a 4-2 win would be nice. Palmer, two penalties, why not? If the penalties can happen when he's on the pitch, again, that would really boost the team. And we're giving Darwin another chance. Obviously, we have to. There is no way I can not play uh, Darwin against Sheffield United. If he can team up with Salah and they can bring in the points, very, very good. And then Haaland, Villa away. It's not a bad captaincy shout, but I know that Haaland just isn't as good away from home as he is playing at home. And I just think Salah is the better option for this game week. And then on the bench, we've got Ariola, we've got Wood. Fulham away could be to be fair he might be able to score in that one against Fulham um they are obviously friends from the championship days then Matty Cash on the bench Man City at home I'm feeling very doubtful that um City are going to keep a clean sheet there in that one but I'm probably jinxing it now and Cash will actually probably get a goal as well so enjoy that <laughs> and then we've got Gaboria on the bench for Arsenal at home for obvious reasons so that's how the team is shaping up there is the temptation obviously to do the Cash Tomiyasu pick but I feel like my defence for this game week is okay. I don't really need to make that transfer right now. And I could also roll the transfer, but I don't like the sound of Ariola against Spurs. And I think Dubravka is just a nice cheap option and it will give me a little bit more extra, a little bit, I can't speak, give me a little bit extra in the bank, which I haven't put on here, but it should be 2.2 million. So <laughs> that is there as well. But let me know what you think as always in the comments and I will see you very soon because we have another deadline in a couple of days time. So don't forget to subscribe, keep up with the channel and I will see you in the next video.